So do you guys remember the Jeep Liberty, kind of a square boxy vehicle? Well, that one is no more. It is now replaced by this, the brand new Jeep Cherokee. But this car, even though it may not look like it competes with the brand new Toyota RAV4, come on with me, the Honda CRV, and of course, the brand new Ford Escape. And these are mid-sized crossovers, and we're gonna take them for a ride, a very quick ride next on the fast lane car and compare the Jeep to all three of these. What I have here, folks, is the Toyota paperwork. It's called the Moroni, and this particular vehicle puts out 176 horsepower and 172 pound-feet of torque fed through a 2.5 liter engine. <sighs> the Camry price. engine, isn't it? Nathan? Yeah, yeah, it comes right out of the Camry. The price, 27,790. So it's kind of pricey. And what's the EPA MPG? Because that is crucial in this segment. Yeah, it is. Total combined, 25 miles per gallon. All right, well, let's take it for a ride and see how it compares to the brand new Jeep. All right, couple ground rules we have to set right away. Yeah. We get these cars for like 10 minutes. There's a lot of journalists who want to drive them, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we have to fight them, I and mean, we kick all their asses, but at the same time, we have to be nice and let them drive it. So, we've driven all of these vehicles before. We've reviewed all of these vehicles before, so this is just a real quick recap. All right, so now we are in the Toyota RAV4, which, as it happens, is the identical price of the Jeep Cherokee that we're driving, $27,000. That is correct, Amundo. And... I love the old one. I didn't realize how much I loved the old one until I started driving the new one. The thing is, folks, it's not a bad vehicle. It's a nice four-cylinder car. But the old RAV4 had that beefy V6 you could get, and it had a lot of spirit. You know that old RAV4 with the V6? That was a hot rod, Nathan. It a hot was. Rod. I saw that thing on a track take an Audi. It was crazy fast. Yeah, that thing had some serious power. And you look at power to weight. Oh, my God, that thing was a rocket. And then you drive this one, and it's fine. It's okay. It feels okay when you're going through the corners, but it just does everything okay. And I don't know, okay is not enough anymore. You know, um, I think the Toyota, of course, has a reputation, and deservedly so, for reliability, for quality, for dependability, and that's what you're buying when you buy this. You're buying something that's gonna last forever, that you can give your mom, your grandma, and they know they're not gonna have to spend a lot of time in the service department getting it repaired. I like the layout in here. I think it's actually very straightforward. Mm. Is it off-road worthy? Heck no. I mean, mm. this thing is all about fuel economy. It's got no ground clearance. Very little. As we saw when we took it off-road. And compared to the Cherokee, this is certainly, if the Cherokee is, or the Weasel, as you call no, it, is, is 10, with maybe the Subaru being also a nine or a 10 off-road worthiness, this is probably more like a three. Would you agree? I would agree, and I don't agree on the interior layout. Uh, it's, uh, it's better than the old one, but the fake carbon fiber, I mean, Toyota, really? All right, I'll give you that one. Fake carbon fiber on a $27,000 car. But there is some nice uh, soft touch uh, leather, I think, or leather ed yeah, materials. Yeah, right here, that's it. And then here, it's a little harder. A little harder? Okay, a lot harder. <laughs> All right, well, let's take the uh, Escape next and see how that compares, because I have a feeling that's more of the speedster of the bunch. I agree. Oh, Nathan, they did not provide us with a comparable vehicle for the Escape, because this is the EcoBoost that puts out 240 horsepower and it has all the bells and whistles. So it gets 24 MPG, but check this out. The price as tested, $36,000. So it really doesn't compete with the base Cherokee. Yeah, but there is a V6 version, isn't there? There is a V6 version of the Cherokee that does compete with this, but today we're comparing it to the four. So we're doing the best that we can. Let's take it for a ride. All right, Nathan, let's escape in the escape. Like, I know, I know, but it is a sports car of the group, isn't it? it? Without a doubt, this thing has the sharpest. It definitely has 
It's the best road feel. Um, it, I, it's just it's fast too, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got the reflexes of a cheetah. It's, well, it's a got the, the it's a weasel. No, 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 it's <laughs> the Jeep. It's got the EcoBoost, man. And I'll tell you, turbocharging can't go wrong with it. Yeah, and the interior is also very European in my mind. It's very uh, techno. There's a lot of buttons. There's a lot of things going on here. There's like 14 different screens you can look at. And lots of angles, too, and lots of pretty damn good materials. This is the challenger to the Jeep in my mind. The Jeep Cherokee directly challenges this vehicle in terms of interior. The V6 Pedestar. The V6 Pedestar challenges this engine. See? See yeah. how that works? Yeah, you work that man. Yeah. Well, there is, a, there is a lesser engine for the Ford, you know? And, and there's obviously a lesser engine for the Jeep, which is what we're using right now. So if you put this top-of-the-line one against the top-of-the-line Jeep, I think that they'd probably be pretty close, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a great matchup. One day we'll have to do it when we we'll get back Ooh, to up Colorado. in Colorado. Hmm. But in terms of the cars that we have here today, uh, this feels a little more sophisticated. That feels a little more down home. Yeah. Um, this feels a little bit more, um, you know, on its tippy toes, ready to to dance, shall we say? And that feels like it's a little bit ready. It's a little bit more ready to brawl. Look, it is light on its toes, and this is probably the well. We already said it's the sports car out of the group, and you know what? No doubt, it is the sports car out of the group. And it's also, I think, the smallest in terms of interior volume. I feel the most constrained in here. Yeah, we don't know for sure what the numbers are, but I'll tell you this: it doesn't feel as big as the Honda CRV. No, by far it doesn't. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the Monroni for the Honda CRV, and here are the facts and figures. This is a 185 horsepower, 2.4 liter dual overhead cam engine that is mated to a five speed automatic transmission. It gets 25 MPG combined, and perhaps the most important number is, voila, 26,975. That is the as tested price. So let's take it for a ride and see how it compares to the others. Nathan, we are now in the Honda CRV, and to my mind, <laughs> this is the mommy mobile of the bunch, right? This is very roomy, it's very ergonomically simple, there's not a lot of uh, fancy schmancy technology, it's front wheel drive until the front wheels start to slip, then it becomes rear wheel, or all wheel drive actually, and it's uh, just a very straightforward machine. In a word, squishy which is a good thing if you like a really smooth ride this has the best ride out of any of the vehicles in this class um it's enough to put you to sleep i mean in the back seat of course <laughs> what if you have family right if you You're have family in the back seat, yeah. and it's also it's, oh. it's also probably the least sporty of the bunch Let's face it, this is one of the most popular vehicles in the segment. Honda's very conservative about this. They don't yeah. want to rock the boat. They don't want to mess with sales. And so they're not going to do anything that's revolutionary. Well, yeah, that's that's kind of typical for Honda, at least in the United States. And the other part is, look, these things are known to be very reliable, very safe, very frugal. Very and, roomy. Yeah, it's extremely roomy. And you know what? Some people just want that. Now, on the other hand, guys who have a little lead in the pencil, Want something that has more like horse, yeah, that's right, more horsepower, more stamina, more, oh, I just want to be a little stronger. And so cojones. you won't find that here. Yeah, cojones. I didn't want to say it. I thought you'd say it this time. <laughs> so that, you know, and that, but that's, that's just a big deal for some people. So obviously if you have passion, this isn't for you. But if you just need a really good appliance, this is it. This is awesome. No, I think that's being a little too harsh. I think no. this is a great car for the family. It does everything a family needs, and that does not include go off-road because... We took it off-road. It did all right. It did okay. Yeah, it did okay. But it's not something that, that you would relish bashing boulders with. It's something that you're terrified of actually scraping the bottom of. And that, we're, of course, comparing a Jeep based on off-road worthiness. And this segment isn't about that. It's about fuel economy, and this car does really well. It does do really well, and that's despite the fact that it has the least amount of gears compared to the other ones. So it does have this eco button. Eco button! Not to be outdone, Jeep gave us the 2014 Cherokee. Latitude has a two-wheel drive setup and 184 horsepower, 171 pound-feet of torque out of a 2.4 liter four-cylinder engine. Price is tested, 28,380. 
a little pricey. How about MPGs? Are they on there? Uh, let's see here. MPGs. Yes, combined. 25 miles per gallon. Which is about the same as the others. It is about the same, but it does get 31 miles per gallon highway. Nathan, you are absolutely right. For about the same amount of money, oddly, this is a front wheel drive only vehicle. Yeah, it's a little pricey. You do get a very nice looking vehicle though with a lot of amenities. I mean, look, it got the big screen and all that stuff, but it's not four wheel drive. But I have to tell you, out of the ones that we've driven, it does feel the most solid. I'm impressed by how tight this feels. It's a really well put together vehicle. Jeep tried really hard to produce something that has quality immune. Of course, we're not talking about off-road worthiness necessarily because we have a completely different video for that. So if you're interested in seeing how this does off-road, go to tflcar.com and check it out. That's right. And we also have an on-road video with the regular four-wheel drive version of the Cherokee. Folks, yes, this is the front-wheel drive model, but when you look around the cabin, it's got a lot of goodies the other ones don't have. Yeah, this huge screen is probably the best of them, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. So the other way to look at this particular vehicle, in my one, is you're getting a quality American product and you're getting some really, really nice touch features on the inside. Yeah, and you're getting uh, that Jeep brand, which you know, represents for a lot of people that kind of American spirit of go anywhere. American spirit, even though this is for all drive only, but it does have, once again, high tech stuff nine speed automatic transmission. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. And you are getting what I think is the best ride of the bunch. It's not wallowy. Like, for instance... Well, the CRV is kind of squishy. Yeah, and it's not quite as sporty as the... The Ford Escape. Escape yeah, uh, and it's not quite as um, loosey-goosey as the RAV4. It's, it's, in my mind, probably the best ride of the bunch. It doesn't sound hollow when you close doors. It doesn't have any tinny noise to it. You don't hear gravel hitting in the bottom very much. It's, it feels like a quality car. So this has been a very quick comparison because we get the cars for only like 10 minutes, but I think it gives you a good sense of what each one's strengths and weaknesses are. Absolutely, you get a little taste of what each one has going for it. And I can tell you this, Jeep was very smart with the ones they brought out because the only vehicle we feel they should have brought out that they didn't is the Subaru Forester. Of we course. think that one is right up there. And but, but bringing out the Ford Escape, that was a really big gamble because it's a fine vehicle. And it's got a lot of torque and it's got a lot of power. That's right. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. Saying thanks for watching and remember, subscribe for a new car video every day. We'll see you guys next time. That's Ciao. right. Peace. So, as you can tell, I'm in an old Land Rover and having way too much fun with my man Bob Burns here from Land Rover Range Rover. And we're going to take this bad boy for a ride. A real ride. An old school ride. Coming up next on the Fast Lane Car.